uh, this talk is um, from linear algebra to machine learning. Um, well, I want to talk about uh, basically some NumPy functions and also some basic TensorFlow functions, which are the same as the NumPy functions, and how uh, linear algebra can help us to understand what is happening in uh, some small classification problems. Um, yeah, uh, basically how to connect uh, all of these, uh, NumPy, linear algebra, and machine learning. Uh, yeah. Oops, sorry. Uh, so, um, yeah, uh, uh, apart from linear algebra, some other things that we need to learn in order to go deeper in machine learning is uh, calculus, obviously. Uh, probability and statistics. Um, well, uh, uh, lastly, uh, as we know, uh, machine learning is some high topic, so everyone wants to do machine learning. Um, as far as uh, I know, or as far as I want to do it, uh, it's better to go for the hard path. Uh, that is, uh, it is better to learn the theoretical concepts in order to understand uh, what is happening in the data science. So for that reason is uh, that uh, most the most important positions are taken by mathematicians or physicians. Um, I don't like that because I am a software engineer. So, but still, uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, it is uh, still some path to go from a software engineer to a data scientist. Uh, maybe it's uh, harder, but uh, it is worth to go uh, and learn these mathematics concepts. So this is a kind of very basic talk, uh, mainly if, uh, uh, I will say some things about linear algebra, as I said. Um, yeah, apart from linear algebra, uh, I want to talk about uh, vectorization. Uh, when I start to learn machine learning, I did it uh, in the wrong way. <laughs> I mean, uh, this is some implementation uh, for a matrix distance. And as you can see, there are some for loops, some uh, indexations that are not uh, quite efficient. But, well, still this code is working. And I could, uh, okay, also some, this is my Euclidean distance implementation. Um, yeah, this code uh, was able to to do what was supposed to do, but it was taking a lot of time. <laughs> so I did start in this way because I didn't know the vectorization. Um, yeah, so let's start talking about vectors. Um, yeah, vectors are simple, simply a collection of numbers. Usually we find in the books with some arrow above or 
in uh, bold notation. Uh, this is not that important, but yeah, it is. Um, yeah, there are a lot of um, small things that we should know. Uh, for example, how to calculate the length of some vector. It is this formula, and we can do it with NumPy and TensorFlow in this way. Uh, as you can see, uh, when TensorFlow was implemented, they just took the same names and the same notation as NumPy, which is good. Uh, another important operation with vectors is the calculation of distance. Um, here, as uh, you can see, this uh, formula, uh, the Euclidean distance, is the same as the norm. So we can calculate the Euclidean distance using the norm uh, function. Um, once again, it's almost the same in TensorFlow. Uh, another important operation, maybe the most important one, uh, the dot product. So, yeah, once again, it's quite simple. I mean, um, in NumPy. Um, yeah, we can do something like this. Like, just uh, call the MP dot, or uh, just, or also we can uh, do exactly this formula. Um, yeah, we are using vectorization. Um, TensorFlow is almost the same. Uh, one very uh, important concept for me, or detail, is that usually uh, the norm, the distance, the length of some vector, uh, they are very similar, and we can do some kind of, uh, some good, uh, how can I say, uh, we can derive some formulas. Uh, in this case, uh, it's easy to see that uh, the dot product of the same number, it is actually the norm uh, squared. So these two codes uh, will be the same, will give off the same result. Um, it is uh, somewhat important to take this into account or uh, internalize this because we don't always have uh, uh, the implementation of some functions, some distance functions, then when we want to do it from scratch, uh, we uh, maybe these concepts, uh, if we have uh, if we know it, if we have this concept internalized, um, we can go deeper. Um, okay, so as we know, matrix multiplication, we need to, um, yeah, we, it is only uh, assume uh, I mean, uh, we go from row, um, the column of the second matrix, and then we will get uh, another matrix. Um, yeah, this is easy in NumPy and TensorFlow. Uh, okay, so we'll go for some examples. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know if you know this uh, stuff that is kind of 
uh, funny these days. Like uh, some people is saying that the artificial intelligence, the artificial intelligence winter is coming. Um, yeah, uh, maybe it's not coming. Uh, yeah, actually, it's not coming. Uh, but uh, this uh, idea uh, is very um, funny because actually we had some winter uh, before. Uh, it was chaos because some guy published some paper and this guy proved that a single perceptron is not able to solve the sort problem. Uh, um, yeah, uh, I want to show some a small code. Uh, showing that it's possible to solve this uh, exclusive or problem using only one mirror if we change a little bit some concepts. Um, yeah. And also, I want to uh, show some small lines of code. Uh, Implementing uh, linear regression, just multiplying some matrices. Mm, yeah, so let's go for the idea of linear regression. Um, yeah, the idea is to minimize the distance. Uh, to draw some line which is able to minimize the distance between these points and the line. So we want to find, uh, in the case of the two-dimensional uh, data set, uh, some, the intercept and the slope of this line. So this is the most simple case. Um, yeah, this is the notation that we usually see. Um, this is the matrix notation. Uh, um, the solution is this one. So uh, we will skip the steps from for going from here to here. But you believe me because I am the speaker, um, because I saw this on the internet. <laughs> uh, so yeah, this is the solution. Um, oops. Uh, so give me some moment. Uh, so, okay, uh, how many of you is, uh, how many of you are working in machine learning or data science? Um, I mean, uh, how many of you are deeply interested in machine learning, even if you are not working? Okay, yeah. Um, so, do you recognize these uh, small data sets? Um, if you see, uh, they are more or less different, but they draw the same line. So they are called the quartet and scum. Um, yeah, the idea is to show uh, or to visualize the concept of correlation. And it's a very famous, very famous 
data set uh, for this purpose. Um, so yeah, uh, here I have some function to, uh, can you see the, the code? I can increase the size. So everything is here. Like this is what we need to do. Just take uh, the data set and apply some operations, some uh, multiplications. Oops. Um, is here. here. Uh, so yeah, it's not very clear, but if we go from here, we can see uh, the transpose of this uh, data multiplied by the data, which is here, and yeah, um, the rest, and we get the solution. Um, here uh, is some kind of preprocessing steps. We are adding some uh, column, uh, adding uh, number ones, which are actually here. Um, there is some multiplication with some bias term. Uh, so whatever. Uh, so yeah, we just uh, send uh, this uh, this this data. I mean uh, the y and the x. So the data set and the corresponding labels. Not labels, but the corresponding values. Um, we will get uh, the solution, the W, which is containing the slough and the offset. And then we just plot this. Mm, yeah, I am taking this uh, small data sets. Um, as uh, it was supposed to be, they draw the same line, so it's working. <laughs> um, yeah, the point is that uh, having uh, the concept uh, clear, in, we can just do some matrix multiplications, and this is uh, some basic machine learning. Um, we also can do it this with TensorFlow. So we know that the vectors are actually one-dimensional tensors. And then we just apply the concepts or we apply the deep, uh, TensorFlow idea of coding. And we create some placeholders and we do the same multiplication. Mm, well, actually, it's mm, very ugly this code, but it's working. And then, yeah, just run the session with the variables that we define in our placeholders, and it will work. Um, yeah, we just uh, did some matrix multiplications. Um, now, uh, what I said before, 
I want to implement a simple percent term. Well, not exactly a percent term. Some neuron, and then with this simple neuron, uh, we can solve the sort problem. So the idea is uh, not use the same kind of neuron, but instead of using some monotonic function, we can use uh, some non-monotonic function in the neuron. Uh, so yeah, usually the best way to, or the best uh, idea is to use monotonic functions as the sigmoids, but we can use some non-monotonic function. In this case, uh, Oh, okay, uh, this is just the data set. We can see that it's uh, some sort of data set. So we need uh, at least two lines to classify this uh, data. Uh, if we use a uh, non-monotonic function, uh, we can do it uh, with just one neuron. Mm, let me check here. So what the function that I did use was a uh, cosine function. Um, if you see, uh, in this first uh, visualization, it is almost classified. So uh, you can see that uh, it is, uh, I don't know if you can see the gradient as going up and then going down and then again uh, going up and down. So it's, uh, imagine some cosine function uh, in three dimensions, and then we can do the classification in this way. So actually it was possible to avoid the the winter, the artificial intelligence winter, like 50 years ago. Well, it was not possible, but the, we had some enough uh, mathematic concepts. Um, so it's very interesting historical stuff. Um, so yeah, these two basic uh, examples is those that I wanted to show. Um, and basically what we are doing is just doing matrix multiplications and we are not using for loops. So it is again, um, good idea, I mean, again, as a conclusion, it is good idea to go deeper and deeper in the mathematical concepts, and this will give us some kind of uh, different mentality to solve uh, data science problems. Uh, so what else uh, we can do uh, with uh, uh, 
uh, linear algebra. Uh, mm, the most important algorithm these days is the gradient descent. And um, it's basically uh, the implementation a lot of matrix multiplications. Um, also, another linear algebra concept, the important linear uh, algebra concept in data science is the eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Um, is the base of uh, dimensionality reduction. Um, yeah, also because um, sometimes we are using very, very small numbers or very huge number, we should be aware of uh, numerical instabilities. Um, yeah, some material that, in my opinion, is our work to check is um, this specialization, the specialization by Coursera, and also that they have uh, three courses. Um, is a good one. Um, do you know this guy, Siraj Raval? Um, well, he's very famous. Um, and he explains the mathematical concepts as a comedian. Uh, sometimes uh, he's uh, leaving some gaps, but actually he's a very good one explaining. Um, the deep learning book has some chapter where they list uh, which concepts we should learn uh, for uh, mathematic concepts. Um, even when it's not uh, how good material to study, we can check uh, at least which concepts are important. Mm, yeah, that's all. Do you have questions or comments? Oh, okay. Uh, in this case, he actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's asking for uh, why this is slow or why uh, the other operations are faster. Um, the idea of the this implementation is that. Um, even when we have four loops in R, or this is implemented in R or Python, it is not a good idea to use it because uh, they are not running on compiling time. Uh, yeah, they are not compiled, so uh, the implementation will be slow. So it's preferable to use the vectorized functions that in the case of R are already uh, implemented in the core language. And in the case of Python, we should use NumPy and SciPy to you know, do uh, some, you know, just call these functions. Um, for example, here, uh, is this the same logic? Like just multiply the elements of two vectors and then get the sum of these ones. Um, it is the correct way to do it uh, in Python. Uh, if we are using C or C++, uh, it doesn't matter. We can 
use for loops because uh, the management memory is the best one. But uh, in the case of Python and R or MATLAB, it's not a good idea. Um, yeah, it is a common error for some people. I mean, it was my case. I don't know if it was your case someday. Um, yeah, some more questions or comments? Ah, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, I will share it in my GitHub account. So this is the uh, URL. So actually, uh, the material is already there, but it's not updated. So I will push some update in this uh, in this uh, repository. So. Any other question or comment? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Uh, well, the, the other guy was asking about the repository. Um, now, uh, I want to explain better the third problem. Um, so the idea in uh, the third problem is that we don't have a single line to separate this uh, kind of data. If we draw some line over here, uh, the separation will be not correct. Um, so what we need to have is two layers in order to draw another line. Um, the first uh, perceptron was uh, one single layer, so it was work solving some problems, but then um, it was uh, this this guy Minsky just published some paper and he showed that uh, it was not good idea to use uh, the perceptron. So, but this was solved later, but then we lost around 10 years of research on neural networks. Um, yeah, well, it's a funny history. Um, yeah. Some other question? So we'll uh, thank you. <laughs>